Hello, everybody. So this is going to be a talk on LTI. We just mentioned it a few here, and mostly on LTI 1.3, which is a new version. So just uh, who knows LTI in the room? Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. OK. So we're going to cover there. And let's go with this. 20 minutes is not that much. So really, LTI advantage is bring your tools in the standards way, because LTI is an open stand is a standard uh, education standard. So well, just a few words about me. My name is Claude Vervor. I am an application architect in the integration team at Sengage, which is a courseware publisher. I am also uh, the co-chair of the One Ed Tech, which is a new name of IMS Global LTI meeting, uh, LTI working group, and I'm a Moodle contributor on the Mod LTI uh, plugin because we decided to integrate better, do a better LTI than a new plugin. So we try to improve on the Mod LTI as much as possible. All right. So let's go there. So LTI means learning tool interoperability, right? So interoperability to what, right? Interoperability to learning platforms. So that means your learning tool can interpret with learning platforms, or learning platforms just also known, at least in the US, a lot like learning management systems. And uh, like, obviously like Moodle, but when you do an LTI tool, you build it so that you can also use it in other LMSs as well, right? Because it's a standard. So that's the whole point of it. As a tool, you build it once, and you mostly deploy it everywhere. Mostly. All right, so, uh, so the idea of the um, LTI is really to take an external tool and move it inside and feel it like it's internal, right? And it does that for two main mechanics. The first one is the LTI launch. So the move from your platform to the tool and passing the context of, uh, over the context of the course. And then your tool can communicate back with the learning platform through a set of LTI API. All right, and I just can quickly show that in the idea here. Here is one of our tools in Moodle, and I'm going to click on it and cross my finger, because that's, my, that's our QS server. So, and you see here it's opening up, and it's uh, loading the content, and it's going to be a quiz if all goes well. Uh, and uh, yeah, it kind of looks like it's going to be working. So you see the quiz is in line in, in, inside the Moodle course, but it's an external tool, right? It's hosted elsewhere, but it feels internal, and it's built using a standard. So what we built here for Moodle would work the same way in our learning management system. All right, so go back here. So LTI actually has been around for a long, long time. It was, but it was getting old. It was built on OAuth 1, O security principles, which have been deprecated for quite some time. So basically, it was kind of due to be uh, not back brought to the future, but it's brought to the present. <laughs> So LTI 1.3 is all about bringing, taking the LTI functionalities, but regenerating the world uh, security stack to bring it to the current norms of the web, mostly OpenID, OAuth 2, those kind of things. So it's really been moving from OAuth 1.0, shared secret, deprecated to, uh, to, the, uh, to those new set of the current web security. So the one first thing, for example, there is no more shared secret. Everybody just exposes their public keys. So that's a, one of the security uh, principles here. So what we see here is that my Moodle I'm going to use for demo, this Moodle exposes its public key to a well-known endpoint. That's the public key. So anything coming from this Moodle will have to be signed and verified using this public key. Everybody can get the public key. But that's how uh, us at uh, for example, at Sengage, we know this is coming from this site because it's signed by this site. But when we send a request back to Moodle, we sign it with, with our private key, and, but we also expose on our side our public keys. So that's each site expo each exchanges their public keys and points. So that's a, one of the security of LTI advantage. So obviously, uh, the ability to move from a learning platform to a tool that starts first by sharing identity. You want to know who's the user, who's the user you're launching. So it all starts with some kind of SSO. So LTI has always been seen as some kind of single sign-on mechanics, where you're in the learning platform, you launch in the tool, you don't have to log in in the tool. You're just right there in the tool. So to do that, the new way to do that is obviously, well, it's to use OpenID. So LTI Advantage is, is a profile of OpenID. So a quick recap about how OpenID works. Usually, not in LTI. In OpenID, you have a web app. You say, I want to log in. You want to log in using Google, whatever. You go to the authentication provider. You make an authentication request. There, you log in. You give whatever. And then it comes back uh, to, your, uh, to your web application for your authentication response. 
and with what is called an ID token, which is a JSON web token, which contains uh, identity information about the user. So that's OpenID in a nutshell. And so LTI is, uh, is using that, but it's a little bit different than your traditional web app. Why? Well, well, basically, that's what's in the ID token. User ID, names, email, those kind of things, right? So with LTI, the way it's different is that the user doesn't go to the learning tool first. It goes to Moodle first. So there is a new phase called link initiation, where Moodle is going to say to the tool, hey, someone wants to get in. And that's going to initiate the open ID flow. So that's why you have this login initiation URL, which is part of the open ID specification to say, to nudge the learning tool, say, hey, someone wants to get in, initiate an open ID flow to get the user in. And what we see here also is that the ID token is actually quite bigger, you know, compared to the previous one. And that's why is it so big? Because when you want to transfer from a course to a learning tool, just sharing identity is not enough. You need to bring more context than that. So you need, obviously, to give the, uh, the user information, which comes from the OpenID claims. But you also need to know, to give the context, in which, from which course are you launching? So you give context information. But you also need to say, which role is this user in this context? So this is a student launching in this course. And this is the ID of that student. And also, which activity are you trying to go to? So, so another piece of the payload is where you want to go. And additional things like, well, how will I pass a grade back? Well, this is the end point, how well you will pass a grade back for this activity. So all of that is packaged together within an extension of the ID token. So it's the same ID token, but additional claims in the ID token, which are defined through the LTI namespace. So the, and there is more to it. That's why it's way bigger than the ID token. It is an ID token, but with a lot more data into it. So yeah, so that was the phase about the, uh, really that's what is LTI 1.3, the core mechanics of the LTI launch. Well, now, when you, how, you, when you want to bring a link to your learning platform, you usually don't want to bring just one link to your tool. You want to bring a link to your chapter one, to your simulation, uh, to your specific essay. To, so, so what I mean by that is that you need to more than one link to, to go to your tool. You want some kind of deep linking that goes to specific uh, activities that you host in your tool. And how do you bring those links into the system? Well, there is another part of the LTI specification called deep linking. And deep linking, I, I like to add the name picker flow. So it's not just for picker, but it's a flow that is defined in the specification to go to the tools, not to launch something, but to grab something and bring it back in, in when you're building your course. So that's a deep linking flow. And so here's the deep linking flow. Works like that. You're in your course, and you say you want to add something. And you're making a, an LTI request, but the LTI request is specific saying, I'm a deep linking request, I want to pick something. So then you go to the tool, and the tool can render its own UI to pick something. You don't have just to pick something, you can create something. It's just the choice of the tool. You land it in the tool, the tool is there, you select something, you create something, but at the end, what you must do is return the selection of links to be added, of LTI links to be added in the course. So that's the, that's the UI flow. Well, I don't know it turned black like that, but... <laughs> Okay, but that, um, again, that's a deep linking flow. And uh, what's really important to understand here, it's not a web service, it's a UI flow. Again, you're moving UI to the tool to pick something, and in the return from that back to the LMS, you carry what you've selected. So I can do a quick demo on that. So here, let's say I go back to my course, and I want to add additional stuff in here. All right, so I'm gonna turn editing. Mode on. I go back here. I go external tool. And I'm going to pick um, content here. And cross my fingers. And here we go. So, with different kind of product. Okay, I want to add deep links in that product. So I'm going to select my content, and then now, so you see this UI here? No, obviously, it's not Moodle UI. That's our UI. A tool could do whatever they want here. They could do uh, assessment building tool, uh, anything you want. But here, in our view, we, we, have, we let you uh, we show some kind of picker, and you can say, okay, I want to add the chapter one for reading, and this, this 
I want to add, you know, I want to add this one here or so. So you make a few selections, and so once you've made the selection, what's going to be returned to the LMS is a LTI links definition to link back to those resources. And it's also going to say if those activities are graded or not, so that Moodle can create a gradebook column for those or not, depending if they're graded or not. So I'm going to say continue. I'm going to say save. And this is where it's packaged up. A JSON web token is sent to Moodle. And now, since 3.11, Moodle lets you return more than one at a time. So here, Moodle is make a quick summary of this is the free links you're going to add to your system. And you see uh, one of them is graded. And I'm going to say save and return to course. And those, course, those links are added to my course. So that's the uh, deep linking flow uh, to add content uh, to a course using if they were there. So that's the uh, deep linking in action. All right. I think I'll do it. So that's, a, that's an example of the payload you, that's returned. So you see here, you give a specific URL. The line item section here is telling you line item means it's a fancy name for gradebook colon. So as you say, this will need a gradebook colon and worth 87 points. And I'm adding identifiers because when I'm going to use the API, I'm going to use those identifiers to find back those gradebook columns. So, so as a tool, I'm giving specific identifiers. And there is, and here, what we don't see here, I say, uh, I'd prefer this to be displayed in an iframe because a tool can either be displayed in an iframe or in your window. And as when you import your content, you can say this one I prefer in an iframe, this one I would prefer in a new window. Right? Okay, so that's all about lunches and creating LTI lunches. But what about uh, LTI services? So I mentioned LTI services, so that we move to uh, the new stack of, uh, of technology. So obviously we use OF2. So OF2, just again a quick uh, re reminder. The first thing you need, you need to, you, to use OF2, you need to have an access token, an authorization token. So the first thing you need to do as a tool is go ask for that token. So how that works is that you make what is called the JOT assertion, which is I am this tool, and you sign it with your private key. You send that to, to the uh, authorization endpoint, which is going to verify you are that tool because you, it's going to match your public key. And therefore, once it validated you, you're also asking for scopes. And scopes are basically what you want this token to be able to do, the permissions you want to be given to that token. So you say, OK, hey, I am this tool, and I want to be able to send a grade to the gradebook. So you ask that, and you see here, this, it's called clan credentials in OAuth. That means, usually in OAuth, you, as a user, you get prompted, do you authorize this tool to do this? Do you authorize this tool to do that? But with client credentials, the user is not prompted to, 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 uh, to give the, uh, the agreement, because the trust is between the platform and the tool. It doesn't involve the end user. So in that case here, so the platform will just re give the token. It doesn't have to interact with the end user. Okay, so it's going to return the token, which is as a time to leave, and as a set of scope, which may differ from the scope you asked. Because you may ask a bunch of things, but at the end you may get less. So here you have a token, valid for usually an hour, that you can use for all for this, for the services that have been scoped to that, uh, to that, uh, to that token. And uh, it's, it's not bound to a user, that means you can use it across all, the, all, the, all, the, all your courses, all the requests you need to do. You can use the same token, as long as that has the right scope. Right? So that's the mechanics how to get a token. And then what kind of services do we have in LTI? Well, um, yeah, also I forgot to mention, if you, if you have a service, that's fine, but how do you know the API endpoint to, to call the service, right? And those are actually given to you into the LTI payload. Every service that you can access, will, you will be given in every LTI launch the endpoint of that service. So it's basically kind of a run, at runtime, you get to know the, end, the endpoint. So here, we see that's, an L, that's part of an LTI launch. And it says you to send a grade. This is the URL you're going to use to send a grade. So that's part of the LTI launch. Right? So now you, have, you know how to get the token. You know the URL, so we'll see what the service is about. So this service here is one, one of the most important ones of the two. <laughs> it's assignment and grade services, which is really your, your interaction from a tool to the gradebook. Because usually the first things you want to do as a tool is return a grade of some kind, of some outcomes, back to the uh, learning platform. So here we see here, 
So what you can do with assignment and grade service is that you can send a score. So, uh, but you, the score can, is more than just a, a grade value. You can also have statuses in progress, completed, those kind of things. And Moodle doesn't really use those uh, statuses just yet. Uh, but you can see in the future that you can start showing a needs grading and have the ability to go back to, uh, to the tool for the grading. Uh, so that's that. And then it's also exposed the line item service, which is more a way for a tool to get uh, understanding of the gradebook columns now. So not only can know the gradebook columns, we can add uh, programmatically new gradebook columns to the gradebook. But when you say, give me, my give me the gradebook columns, you can only see yours, so it's sandbox. You cannot just see the full gradebook. You see your tools columns only, your sandbox to your data. You cannot see, every, so you cannot build a general purpose gradebook on that. You see my tools columns, and so you can find it, you can post grade into them, you can create new ones if you need so. So that's through the uh, line item API. So assignment and grade services, that's two things, posting scores and uh, managing gradebook columns. And there is one uh, service uh, that I'm not going to demo here, but it's a course roster, which is also a read-only way to get all the rostering of the, um, of the course, of the current course, of the current context. So you get to know all the users and all their roles, which is quite useful because with the older LTI, you had to wait for a user to click on the link to discover the user. But now with these names and roles, you can just discover the user, all the users of the course up front on first launch from the instructor or from any, any user. And so, well, that's okay. <laughs> and so, uh, we've talked here about all this kind of data that's required to establish an LTI 1.3, and it's a bit more than it used to be with LTI 1.1, because uh, you need to, everybody needs to, expect to exchange their public keys, it's called the JWKS URL, you need to exchange your registration data, and a bunch of other pieces of data here that makes the things that's a bit harder to configure when you're doing an LTI advantage. That's why there is um, a new, uh, well, new. As there is a, a new specification called dynamic registration, which actually lets you have the both sides communicate and exchange that data uh, very easily by just paste, pasting a, a URL into um, into the um, into Moodle. So I can demo that to you also. Uh, and that's also I think since 3.11. So I'm going to log out here. Who knows this, who this guy is? <laughs> yes. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> yes, it's there so that nobody messes with this uh, Moodle. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go to site administration. And plugins. And external tools. Oops, here. And you see there is this box here, and it's all called Add LTI Advantage, Add Legacy LTI. Uh, that's for LTI two, and also some. If you want to catch it, but if if you know LTI two, you should just forget about it, <laughs> like it, it never existed. I think it's people, everybody raising the the word LTI two from anywhere where it has where it existed. So, but here I'm gonna paste. Uh, a, a test tool uh, called Robotest, and I'm going to paste this URL here, which has a so that's the place to that's the um, endpoint for automatic registration. I'm going to say add LTI advantage, and the thing is that with uh, with 3.11, uh, this uh, this is actually a bit of an improvement is that you, when you try to to do dynamic registration of a tool that's already deployed, it's going to ask you, do you want to do a new deployment or do you just to, uh, to want to update the current deployment? So you can use dynamic registration not only for deployment but for uh, updates in, in place. But here I'm gonna say, I'm gonna just register as a new tool. And you see, it's gonna go, yep, yep, yep. And it, went, it worked okay, so the robot is happy. And what we see here is that all the information that were exchanged from both parties, so that's Moodle exposing, exposing its attributes, that's, and then there is a, uh, this tool saying, okay, this is who I want, what kind of services I want, my URLs and everything. And finally, Moodle is going to respond with a client ID, which is going to finalize the registration. And when all of that is done, 
you can send the Windows post message and it's going to go back to Moodle. And one last thing is that because for security reason, it's when after dynamic registration, a tool is not activated, it's waiting for the uh, admin to activate it so you can go back and actually revisit what has been pushed by the tool in case you want to overwrite some security. Like the tool say, I want to names and roles. And you say, well, I want to see email. And you say, well, no, and we're not going to let you see email. So you can go revisit that and, and just, and then after when you're happy, you can activate and the tool is made available. So that's dynamic registration. So kind of easy, because LTI advantage, it's not that many things, but it's copy pasting. But it's amazing how copy pasting could go wrong all the time. <laughs> this is just. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go there. So, LT advantage is just, uh, just a, a summary that it's a bundle of all those things. So, sometimes you hear advantage or one free. Advantage is just to say this is all of that together. And, yeah, there are a bunch of stuff on, on the work on the Moodle model TI plugin. So, I encourage you to look at that. And finally, blah, blah, blah. The slide is here if you want those slides. <laughs> Is our next presenter in the room, Anders? No? Yes? Okay. Oh, okay, great. Uh, any questions for Claude? Oh, sorry. <laughs> they have their questions. Uh, this is specific to LTI, uh, but with the browsers getting a lot more secure with cookies, yeah. what's happening with the LTI token? Yeah, no, no, that's uh, the <laughs> elephant in the room, isn't it? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> so I think there are multiple answers on the cookie on the cookie issue. Uh, uh, the f so the first one is that LTI, uh, IMS Global One Tech has been working on a proposal for to replace cookies with some kind of JavaScript mechanics to send state to the um, parent window. Of the um, of the LMS, so basically what, what what this means is that as a tool you could push some state into Moodle, move to the next page, and get it back from Moodle. And that's actually in uh, there is a tracker item for that. It's this one here uh, in in Moodle, and so that's one thing. Then the other thing is that well, you can obviously open in a new window. So that's, you know, it's like, there's also, it, it depends, because you could detect that first-party cookies are, are sticking or not. And if they are not, if they are not, then you, you can pop up a new window. Otherwise, you, stay, you can stay in frame, because it's not all, all browsers. Um, so there is that. Uh, obviously, if you can do cookie less, uh, good for you. It's like, you know, like React app, single page app, uh, those kind of things. And finally, there is a, pro there is a the browsers are discussing a new uh, proposal called CHIP, C-H-I-P, which stands for cookie, blah, 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 partitioned. So the point here is that with those partitioned cookies, then Safari, mostly because that's the main culprit here, Safari would be comfortable again allowing third-party cookies because they would be partitioned to the main site. So that means a, a cookie would not, would just live within the parent site, uh, and if you go to another site, those cookies will not be visible, so that they, would, they would not be, could not be used anymore as tracker. So I think it's not that cookies are going to go away, but more that I hope that browsers finally are going to put chip in place. We're going to be partitioned cookies, and partitioned cookies are not subject to tracking, and, that's, and partitioned cookies are just what we need, I think, for LTI tools. We don't need anything else, you know. So it's okay that the cookies just live within the time of the frame. So I'd say. If you, uh, I would look at chip proposal and uh, how it progresses on the uh, browser space for that. So I think there is light in the tunnel, but we're in the rough spot right now. <laughs> but I think it will get better. <laughs> yeah. There is one open chair over here if someone by the door wants to come over. Do we have any other questions? If we don't, I have a question for everybody. Hi, uh, thank you so much for the presentation. That was very insightful. So one question that I have is, um, for instance, uh, if I have a custom LTE content provider that I'm programming and I would like to supply um, 
LTE deep linking support and try to have a custom GUI. For example, also implementing another layer of, um, let's just say, filtering, for example, for content. Is this something that I could basically build on top of LTE Advantage, or how does that work? Because what you showed when you um, showed off the deep linking, yeah. which yeah. I'm not so familiar with, I would like to maybe have like a GUI that supports very uh, sophisticated yeah. filtering mechanics. Is that yeah. possible? Well, once you're a new tool, then your tool is your limit, right? So like typically here, when you land in your tool, uh, we could see that like possibly in the future Sengage would, would allow you to do a, a point search and say, I want any kind of content that, con that refers to American war. Mm -hmm. You type American war, it says the chapters, the question, the quiz, shows up in the search, and you say, I want this, this, and this, and that. And some, tools, some tools already do that, actually. And it's built in this, in this spirit. So really, the contract is you go there, something happens, and it returns an, a bunch of LTI links definition. So what happens there can be just a picker, or a search, mm -hmm. and actually we use search, uh, part of it has just kept it there, can be creation, so it's really up to you. You cannot change it in Moodle, but what you can, you, well, once you're in your tool, use the selection you want, um, so yeah. Okay, so by using Moodle as a provider, for example, that would probably not work as easily, so uh, I would need uh, to like, yes, build uh, a tool from scratch, basically. If you use Moodle as a provider, yeah. because that, yes, that's the thing here, is that there is two facets in the, in the LTI house in Moodle, there is Moodle as a learning platform where you go and you launch a tool, but there is also, it's a bit like, I like to see that like Russian dolls, because you can go into another learning management system, which is gonna now launch into Moodle, and Moodle is gonna act as a tool now. Uh, and that's where the other side of the house, which is a tool provider house, where Moodle is now acting as a learning platform tool <laughs> that's embedded into another Moodle or something else, Blackboard, whatever, and in those cases, what are the capabilities are going to be some kind of sub subset of the capabilities of Moodle. And there, I would ask Jake, <laughs> not me. Okay. Jake, Jake is the guy, uh, uh, Jake Danimer, uh, uh, is the one mostly engaged with the LTI as a provider. But that's also insightful because if you want to build courseware, so you build your courses and all of that, but you want to distribute that to a, a bunch of universities and you can host your courseware in Moodle and have then use Moodle as an LTI plugin and plug, in, plug your courseware in multiple uh, LTI. And then for that, then it's, it's, Moodle is going to act now as a courseware platform more. So, okay. Which itself can do LTI launches. So that's why I mean it's Russian dolls, because you launch LTI to Moodle, Moodle launch LTI somewhere, the grades go back here, and the grades go back there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That was actually, I'm curious, Thank how you. many people in the room are already using LTI on your Moodle sites? And how many knew that Moodle could be an LTI provider elsewhere. And is anybody using that function? So you know it can, but you're not. Okay, I was just curious. 